I can tell you one thing. Technology is the single most important aspect of every business that has successfully scaled. It's time for that real estate tech guy. It's your weekly chance to explore how technology can help your real estate business explode. Each week, you'll hear from real estate investors who have been there and done that and find out their favorite technology tips. Listen in as Jordan speaks with tech companies and learns about new technologies and new ideas that will help you scale your business. And now, join your host, Jordan Samuel Fleming, CEO of Smartphone, for this week's episode. All right, welcome to this episode of That Real Estate Tech Guy. My co-pilot for this episode is Larry Goins. Larry has been a good friend of mine for a number of years. We've worked together. He's wearing a smartphone hat. I'm wearing a smartphone hat because we've worked together uh, in his <laughs> systems for years. We've been you know, associates through business. And I got to say, he's one of the guys I really love talking to. Larry, thank you so much for being on. Give people a flavor of your experience, what you do, and what, what your life is in real estate. Man, I, I love it. I really appreciate that. First of all, man, thanks a lot for having me on because especially this is a show about tech and I'm probably one of the least techie guys you'll ever meet. So guys watching this, listening to this, don't be scared, right? Don't be scared. <laughs> if Larry can so, do it. <laughs> yeah. If I had a VCR, it would be flashing 12 o'clock right now. <laughs> so, but man, I've been doing real estate for 35 years and uh, over 35 years. I bought and sold close to a thousand properties in 12 different states. We've done lots, land, commercial. I've owned Dollar General stores, Shoney's restaurants, self-storage facilities, mobile home parks. But our core business is we wholesale about five to 10 deals each and every month. We got a small team here in our office and uh, we do use technology. Technology scares me. And like, I don't know how email works. I don't know about pop mail and all that. I don't know any of that, but I know I can pull up somebody's name. I can click send and they'll get it and they can send it back to me. So I don't have to know how it works. That's the thing I love about working with Jordan is I don't have to know how smartphone works. It's smartphone, right? <laughs> Listen, that's that's very true. Um, and you know what? What really interests me is, I think, you know, because you got a long history in this, doing a number of different types of real estate, etc. But you've also got a long history of of growing technology. Sort of, you know, you've you've sort of gone through some elements there you've you've gone through crm elements until you found a way that works you've gone through phone systems until you found a way where you've kind of evolved that so i mean if you think about how your uh your kind of journey has been uh what would be like some of them you know what would be the main highlights of your technology journey in your real estate business i, I would say it would be learn my limits right at one time i used to sell websites Back in the day, back in the 90s, years ago, uh, I had a guy that created PHP websites and he, you know, we sold them together and, but I knew nothing about websites and I, and I thought, okay, I could develop anything. So I started developing an offer blaster and this and that. I know nothing about software development, managing developers, managing coders. And I finally just like, I can't do this anymore, right? I need to go to the guys who know what they're doing and glom onto them and use their resources because I didn't know what I was doing. So I would say learn my limits. That's probably the main thing because I'm a good sales guy. I'm a good guy on the phone, talking to sellers, talking to buyers, putting deals together, negotiating deals. You know, I mean, we buy all of our properties over the phone. And, um, but I know my limits. We use technology, but I don't create it. I don't claim to know how it works. I just know it works. And that's all I need to know. <laughs> now, now, because you mentioned the team, so that means you know every time you, you know uh, when you've got a team, it's one thing if you're just one person by yourself working mm -hmm. some leads, you're right? Pretty low tech, right? Because, right? Right? You know, you could practically use the Rolodex and the and the corded phone if you wanted to go back forty years, right? But if you got a team, and I see in the background there's a screen with some people on it, that means if you really want to scale a business, technology becomes crucial. So you know, that means you got to have a way of managing leads. It means you got to understand, you know, you got to be able to keep accountable what's going on. 
can you kind of talk to me a bit about how you approach, like, let's just focus on lead management, right? You get leads, okay. you want to work, right? You don't want any of these leads to go dead. How do you approach that from a technology point of view? What, what okay. do you guys do as a team? That's awesome. Great, great, great question. So I do have a team. I have a small team. At one time with our education business and with our real estate business, I had 26 employees. I've simplified that. We have a very small team, about six, seven people. And I've got uh, Bree over here. She's our closing manager. She's right across from me. Tim is right here. He's acquisition. We have a, a new girl, Devin. She's doing acquisitions. And on the screen here, you see Donna and Jean. Can you see them waving? <laughs> real so time. They're, real time. They're in the Philippines. And Donna on the right is our lead manager. Okay. You mentioned lead management. Donna is our lead manager. She works with virtual lead managers, Christina Krause. So, and, and, and I've had, I've had virtual assistants, man, over the last 20 years, right? I've hired them everywhere from Upwork, even before it was Upwork, when it was Elance or something like that. I can't remember the name, but Fiverr, we've had them from everywhere, right? Bestjobs.ph. But the ones that have stuck with us, like Donna's been with us now going on three, maybe four years. Gene's been with us almost a couple of years now. And, and, and through virtual lead managers, they train their VAs how to use Podio, how to use smartphone, how to use all the technology, you know, and train them how to do lead management. Not only that, but they train them how to revive and re-engage leads as well. So Don Donna does not just keep up with our leads. She digs into our database and re-engages or revives leads and then turns them over to me or Tim or Devin, and then we will close them over the phone, right? So, so Donna, what she does is anytime a lead comes in and, you know, we, we use smartphones, so we have a different number for every lead tracking source, right? Whether it's a bandit sign or a Facebook or direct mail or, or SMS or whatever it is, right? A radio. So we have a different phone number for each one. So now we know when that lead comes in, Donna listens to that message or re listens to the voicemail or reads that message. And then she'll set a task for Jean. Jean is what I would call a setter acquisition manager slash setter. She gathers all the property information and the motivation information, and then she'll tee it up for me or Tim, and then we'll get on the phone and close them over the phone, right? Yes. And and Donna also, every time the calls come in, you know, maybe it's maybe it's just a follow-up call from somebody, you know, she'll take that lead to, or take that call and she'll set a task, you know, hey, you missed a call from so-and-so or so-and-so just left you a message, call them back. And she's on top of it. She is a bulldog. She won't let us go without calling these people. She makes sure that we stay on top of every, everybody that we're supposed to. And, and even me, I mean, I, I gave her the right. I said, you get on me. If there's somebody I'm not calling, you <laughs> tell me, you let me. <laughs> exactly. You let me know. And they do that. They do that, which I'm thankful because that's where our deals come from. Right. Well, and you mentioned, so you uh, obviously mentioned smartphone uh, as your phone system, and um, then you mentioned Podio. So your CRM was built inside of Podio. Now, full disclosure, I'm going to say this right now. I helped build that CRM in Podio. My old company, Game Changers, um, how, you know, uh, built built Larry's technology. <clears throat> so I, you know, I'm not coming at this blind. I know exactly how this Larry Systems works. But, <laughs> right. uh, but I want to try out some things because you've got some interesting parts to your system that I think may be interesting to someone maybe, you know, who's starting out, who wants to understand what are the things that they care about inside of their system. So as a business owner, Right. As a as a guy who ultimately has to pay everybody in that room, has to pay the bills in the office and wants to make some money. If you think about just your podio system right now, what are maybe one or two parts of it that really inform your day or your your visibility around how your company's doing? Wow, that's a great question. <laughs> um, I, I, I got full disclosure as well. The system that you built is our third system that we've we've built had built, right? The first one was all about buying stuff off of the MLS and HUD and that sort of thing. 
The second one we called Simple Podio because the whole throughout the thing, we, we keep it simple, keep it simple, keep it simple. Well, we kept it simple and it didn't do anything, right? <laughs> <laughs> it was a, it was a Too uh, simple. glorified. Too simple. It was, <laughs> right. It was a glorified spreadsheet. <laughs> so, <laughs> but but what we did is we actually took the time when we started working with the company, you know, um, that, that you put together, you know, when you put together our system, we, we, we started saying, well, how do we want this to flow? It's got to have a workflow. So we have several different workspaces and then we have several different apps. Like we have communications and CRM as one workspace, then operations is another. And then like controls is another controls is like employees, adding employees and that sort of thing, templates and follow-up sequence and all that. Uh, but CRM and communications is when somebody calls, it comes in as a contact, you add their name, you get their information, then do you convert it to a lead? Is it a seller or a buyer? Then you convert it to a lead. Then it goes over to operations, right? You could add a property. You can put it into deal pipeline. You can keep track of the property, all the property notes, the motivation, all that. And then one of the best things, I got a deal just yesterday, Jordan, from an automated follow-up sequence that you guys put together. I, I don't do anything with it. They get an automatic email and an SMS message once a month. Hey, we talked to you a while back about your property. Were you still wanting to sell? You know, and then they respond, right? I got a deal just yesterday. The nice. guy said, yeah, we spoke a couple, couple of months ago and my wife and I talked about it. You know, can you still do that price that you gave us? I'm like, well, the market is turning. However, if you're ready to move forward today, I will still honor that price. And and what I'm hearing there, if I could just draw something out from there, you know, I always hear, like, I, you know, I'm not a real estate investor, but one of the things I always hear from real estate investors is it's the follow up. You know, there aren't many people who just have one call, closed deal opportunity, right? It happens occasionally, but usually it's the follow up. And where people don't follow up leads, they're not right. making any money because they're not doing that diligence. So, what I'm hearing from that is that your system, is really doing a facilitation so that there you're you know that follow up's going to happen it's just it's going to happen and that means that none of those leads in your system are being dropped because your CRM is set up to keep it the ball in the air essentially correct absolutely that that's the whole key right there if if you guys don't get anything else out of this today remember this the fortune is in the follow up right the fortune is in the follow up that's where probably 40 to 45 maybe sometimes 50% of our closings each month are from old leads they might be 6 months ago it might be 3 years ago but they're from old leads in the system yeah and and that is something i think you know i, I you know if if a new investor particularly thinks about only a few things to get off the ground you know that knowing that you have to follow up those leads and if you don't follow up leads you're leaving essentially you're leaving cash out there you're 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 just there's no you're, question you're just you're just losing you're losing out on money you could be making by the there's simple no act of following up somebody needs to create a business of buying old leads from investors that don't know what to do with them. <laughs> oh. There's your lead source, right? <laughs> well, and let, let me ask you another question about, you know, from a technology point of view, because you mentioned, you know, like tracking numbers and, and uh, you know, you, so you, you clearly have bandit side, you've got, you've got Facebook ads potentially. Now the point of what well, the, what's the point of, a tracking number in that sense is it do you think it do you feel it so that you know what are you getting out of knowing where that lead came from for you wow there, there's so much and um it, it, it's it's tracking it's kpis I, i'll give you an example okay we mail out about ten thousand postcards a week a week not a month but a week okay now in that ten thousand some of them are probate they ha that has their own smartphone number some of them are authentic list that has their own smartphone number some of them are prop stream that has their own smartphone number right so when a lead comes in we can track from lead to set to offer to contract to closing right Con we can track that time frame right we can track all that. 
Then we can look at on the closings, oh, well, we're making an average of 38% more on a probate lead than we are on a prop stream lead, right? So we could track so we're gonna all of that data. Up, we're going to ramp right. up some things. And and so 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 one of the things then by having a an intelligently integrated system like that, you're able to say, look, man, I'm spending X on these leads. Whatever. Say I'm buying lists. And the que- you can then make intelligent decisions and be saying, you know, this list, this type of list is making me money. This one's not making me as much money. I'm going to ramp up here. I'm going to cut out there. So are those the sort of business decisions you're making because these things are all connected? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I, I would I would be lying if I said I was on top of it as much as I should be. But we do track those inf- those items and we use uh, what is it Swift flows that we use for their um, overview. Dashboard. Overview. 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 My overview. business partners. Yeah, yeah, your business partners. Overview. So we use their dashboard. I think that's what it's called. And uh, we usually have it up here on the screen and have the have the girls in the corner of the screen. But I put them on full screen so you guys could see it. Okay. But but we have our dashboard up here. It tracks our dials, our talk time by the day, by the week. It tracks our leads coming in by lead source. It tracks our number of offers by a, by acquisition manager, whether it's me or Gene up there or Devin or Tim. And, and it tracks the closings, the date from, you know, contract to closing. You know, it tracks all that and our profit by lead source. So, we have, you know, we have really about a dozen core KPIs that we keep track of on the marketing side, on the operations side, and on the financial side. And you're able to, because everything is connected, because your systems are integrated, et cetera, it means that though there's no, you know, you're not having to dig deep to find these numbers every month. They're essentially being presented to you as they happen so you can keep track of them. In live real time. Now, that now the, the downside I'm going to tell you with every kind of technology, it's it, everybody on here has heard garbage in, garbage out, right? You've heard that term. So if you want to know what your KPIs are, you got to make sure you keep the fields up to date in, in your system, right? If your fields aren't updated, the ones that can't be updated automatically, right? Yep. If the fields aren't updated, then you have garbage right? You don't know your information. So that's another thing that Donna does is she keeps track of the fields that whenever, whenever we got this uh, overview set up, right? Whenever we got this dashboard set up, they gave us a little video as well as a, a white paper that said, these fields right here control this, these fields control this, these fields control this. So she goes in and edits the fields and updates the fields and makes sure they're current. So that way we, our, our data is correct. Is it always a hundred percent? No, I'll be the first one to tell you, but who is <laughs> right? Yeah, I, I, Jesus, I, I work in technology and my data is not hundred percent correct, but, but it, it's an important point you make that I think, you know, uh, there are two things that I've noticed with particular new investors uh, when they come to technology. Number one, your garbage in, garbage out rule is 100% one of my biggest maxims, right? Keep your data clean or you're wasting time and money. Right. And, and the second is you got to actually like you got to actually work these systems. You know, it's I think people. People often just, they talk about, CR, you know, I hear people talk about CRMs and they talk about these sorts of things and technology is only working when you work it properly. And, you know, the, what I think is great about your system is I can see how leads get passed down the chain. Right. You know, they come into this sort of, if you want of a better term, they come into this unqualified bucket and then you can watch it being worked. And whether that is to get it under contract at the seller stage or and market it out or or to get it out to your buyers to get to get that you know contract in place over on the other side, you can you can watch that happen, which means you got full visibility of your business and and you can make adjustments knowing that you're on top of what's going on, which I think is great. 
And that is so, so true. Not only that, but no one can hide in the word woodwork, right? You, nothing is hidden. There is a history of every single touch. Anytime, like, let, let's say Donna sets a task for me to call somebody, right? And last week, and then she chats me and says, Larry, you haven't called this person yet. I'm like, yeah, I tried to call him twice yesterday. She said, not according to Podio, (laughs) (laughs) not according to smartphone, (laughs) right? (laughs) And she knows I'm not going to call him for my cell phone. No, no, right. (laughs) You can't hide. The data tells everything, right? But here's another thing that you, you started mentioning it, but one of the most important things about this is you've got to spend a little bit of time every once in a while to analyze the data. Like it does me no good to know that I'm making 38% more on probate leads if I do nothing about it, right? It does me no good to, to, to know that information, right? You've got to take action. You've got to analyze that data and then take action on that data. It's the same. I know you and I have talked before about, you know, the concept of training someone on how and and making sure that someone you're training on doing cold calling or following up with someone, you know, it, you you always want to get that level check to make sure that the quality is being maintained. And, you know, right. I know you, I know that there are times where you go in and you listen to some calls because it's just going to going to give you that little bit of are we still OK? Are we still are we still on on the right course? Oh, man, speaking of listening to calls, I listen live. I listen live, you know, with the, with the what is it, Smartphone Pro or whatever? Yeah, Smartphone Pro. Uh, but yeah. Man, I, I mean, I can listen. I can whisper. I can bark. They hate it when I whisper. <laughs> you know, I'm like, say this. And then they don't. I go, say it. Say it. <laughs> <laughs> Larry, they hate, devil they hate on that. my shoulder. <laughs> so, I know, so, so I don't I do not do that that much, but I do barge in. Right. So that way I can listen to the call a little bit and kind of get a little bit about what's going on. And then they can say, well, let, let me let me bring the owner on, you know, and then I'll wait a couple of seconds. And go, hey, this is Larry. How you doing? You know, as if I just joined the call. But right? you've got so, all the contacts there because you've right, been- right, right, right. I know exactly what's going on. And they chat, chat me. You know, they'll chat me. We use Google Drive, Google, whatever, suite or whatever. And they'll chat me the, the Podio link. And uh, that's probably one thing we don't take advantage of in Podio is the the messaging part. We don't really do that, but uh, we just use Google Chat for our email and Drive and calendar and all that. But anyway, so yeah, that that that's very very important. Well, listen, Larry, I know you've got someone you're going to be meeting, so I'm going to go straight into the real estate tech the real estate tech guy fast five. These are uh, five questions I ask every investor that comes on. Quick, quick questions, quick answers if you can. So, number one, what technology pro- product has had the biggest impact on your business? Wow, what product? Wow, I, I, <laughs> it's probably going to sound like this is planned, but. <laughs> for, for people I'm who can't you, see, man, it's a smartphone. I have used, I yeah, that's the smartphone logo. Because uh, I could tell you, I've never had a phone system that integrated with our CRM. So it, you've got to manually put in your leads, you know, in your CRM and all that. Now, I know other ones do that now, but I've used Call Rail, Call 8, you know, uh, all the different ones. And, and smartphone was the one that really... I mean, it, it really changed the, our whole game. It really did. It allowed me to listen, whisper, barge in. It allowed us to keep track of everything. They automatically went into the system. So it really, I mean, if I had to pick one, you know, it would it would be smartphone. If I had to pick a second one, it would be Podio. Excellent. Well, I'll take it as your checks in the mail, uh, along with a new hat. Um, uh, St- <laughs> stock options. That's all I, I want. Stock <laughs> options. <laughs> Question number two: What is the biggest mistake you've made with technology in your business? Trying to do it myself. Trying to figure yes. it out. Learn. You know, learn like, oh, I can do this. I can do this. Just like, just like, like editing our websites or whatever. Right. I mean, we we use uh, carrot websites. Which, in my opinion, I mean, they're they're simple, they're easy to understand. If you can write a Word doc, you can edit the site, you know, add video, add media to it. So, 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 yeah, I think that's it. 
That's a that's a great answer. I think not enough people are self aware enough to know that that is that is the truth. Uh, question number three: What is your best advice on how to integrate technology into your business? So, someone, particularly someone's maybe just starting out and they're approaching this. What would be your best piece of advice uh, aside from maybe trying to not don't do it all yourself? Well, here's what happens, and I don't, I don't know if I'm going to answer this the right way. Okay. But here's what I see a lot of people, especially starting in business, they they end up getting all this technology and they spend all their time onboarding and learning the technology and and then they do no business, right? So so what happens is they're learning how to use this or that, this CRM, that CRM, this phone system, that you know, and 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 they end up bogged down in learning all that but they got no business because they're not doing business. So I would say start, start small, start simple, do a few, especially if you're in real estate. I know you got a lot of people in the real estate space, especially if you're in real estate, do a few deals. So you kind of know the flow and the process and then start adding technology to your flows and process. Don't create technology and run your business around that. The technology is supposed to support your business, not your business support the technology, in my opinion, anyway. You got to do the deals. There's no point right. in having you, an all You got to do the deals. If you're not making right. the, the deals. Exactly. All right. Uh, the question number four, what is the one thing you wish you had known when you started in real estate? Man, I started over 35 years ago, right? I wish I would have known... I got out of it for a little while. I wish that I would would have known how profitable it could be and how it can really literally change your life at an early early age. I would have I would have done things a little bit different. I also wish I would have uh, I wish I would have done more commercial deals early on. Like right now we're buying self storage facilities nice. and 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 mobile home parks. And and I've and I bought a few in the past, but I wish I would have focused more on that. Right, that's phenomenal, phenomenal answer. Now, final question. Um, so, if someone's just starting out and they're looking to invest a bit of money, their money into technology, and they're just starting out, what would you recommend? The three types of technology or technology products you would recommend they bring in first. Like they're just starting out. So, what what would you say you should be spending your money on? Is it lead gen? Is it CRM? Is it like, what, what do you think people should be focused on? I think number one is tracking, right? Tracking your, you know, you, you got to have marketing, right? So whatever technology you want to use with that, whether it's PPC marketing or whatever, but, but I would say create a foundation for your marketing, right? Because a lot of people, well, I'm just going to put my cell phone, you know, on my postcard, or I'm just going to, you know, whatever. No, you've got to set up that technology. So I would say, number one, get, get your get your tracking number set up, right? And I'm not pitching smartphone. I'm not doing that. But, I mean, it is the first step you should do. you got to have your tracking numbers, right? Because it does no good, you know, otherwise, six months or a year or two years down the road, you're like, oh, well, we got to onboard this. we got to do that. And like we talked about earlier in the conversation, then it's going to be a pain trying to trying to migrate things, right? So, so, so I would say start out with your, you know, just keep it as simple as possible. Start out with one tracking number. You know, if you're just doing direct mail or whatever, then add one. A smartphone makes it so easy. You click on a button, add a phone number. You type in the area code you want, and boom. You know, two seconds later, you got a phone number, right? So, so yeah, just start out with your tracking number. And then from there, do a few deals, then worry about a CRM. Get get those deals in place is the key. I think the key thing, and I, I think that's a great thing to remind people sometimes, is the deals have to be flowing. And if the deals aren't flowing, what are you doing? You're wasting that's right. You're wasting your time. That's true. Then then you're a slave to the technology and you got no money coming in. Absolutely. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, well, listen, Larry, I mean, I know you got someone to, to meet, so I'm going to let you go. I It's always a pleasure to see you. It's not I've not seen you in a Man, while. I appreciate you. Um, just before you go, just let people know where they can find you, what you're up to right now. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, you can find me on social media, Larry Goins, uh, or you can uh, go to LarryGoins.com. This is a book that I wrote uh, 
I was actually doing real estate day trading. I was doing virtual wholesaling before you had ever heard the term virtual wholesaling, right? Uh, wrote this book a few years ago. We've updated a couple of times, real estate day trading, how to buy and sell houses using proven technologies. Hey, <laughs> for buying and selling houses the same day using the internet. So yeah, LarryGoins.com, pick up the book, available wherever books are sold. Fantastic. Larry, it's a pleasure. I'll drop all that into the podcast notes and I'll see you soon. Awesome. Good to see you, man. Cheers, man. Thanks for listening to another amazing episode of That Real Estate Tech Guy. Head over to thatrealestatetechguy.com to check out all episodes and get special discounts on tons of awesome real estate technology platforms.